Welcome to UMETSAT's Year of Weather for 2024. We start the year, it is winter in the Northern Hemisphere and summer in the Southern Hemisphere. You can see the large scale storms moving across the Northern continents and the Northern oceans. There's a similar pattern in the South, but it's much further South, much more towards the South Pole, reflecting the warmer atmosphere in the Southern regions. In the north, you'll see that steady flow. And so for us in Europe, what you see is those storms as they travel across the Atlantic, picking up some moisture and then moving over the continental areas. And depending, of course, where they move over depends on the weather effects that we're going to see. Do we see the rain? Do we see the snow? And how does that uh, weather arrive to us? this time of year in Europe we moved to using a named storm system so the weather services collaborate to see what the storms are named and this really helps in the communication of the storms to people around Europe. You'll also see that on this chart we have marked the tropical cyclones so when a large-scale hurricane or tropical cyclone or typhoon is named it's reached a certain wind speed and will start to be part of the warning system in that area. So at this time of year, you'll see some typhoons or um, tropical cyclones in the tropical regions. So here in March, at this point in the year, we'd seen some quite extreme rainfalls, particularly in parts of Italy. So the accumulation of many rainfall events had led to some quite large scale flooding. And that's something we saw throughout Europe. We saw quite a warm winter period followed by quite a lot of rain in some parts of Europe. And that combination of partial drought followed by a little bit more rain led to a lot of flooding. Taking our eyes slightly further south, you'll see in that tropical region the daily pulsation of the clouds. And here the weather systems seem to move from the east to the west, flowing with that circulation. And you'll see there's a pulsating of the clouds. What that reflects is the daily circulation. So as the sun heats the ground, sets off those convective short-lived rainfall events that last for a short period of time and then die away towards the late evening, early morning before being reignited again the following day. And it's these waves, these short-lived events that actually are the seeds of some of the tropical cyclones that we see. These events can also bring quite large scale rainfall to uh, local areas during those rainy seasons. And moving slightly further south, you'll see that as the year has progressed, those southern storm patterns are starting to move slightly further north. The fact that we can see the whole world's weather is because of the international collaboration between the satellite operators. So here we've got the data from the US, from us uh, at UMATSAT in Europe, as well as from Japan. And our colleagues over at Meteor France have been able to stitch this together to produce this global view. There is nowhere in the world that a storm can hide. If you go back to the 1950s, so before the satellite era, when we weren't able to have these global perspectives of meteorology, it was possible to not see some of these cyclones before they affected human beings. Now weather services around the world have the information they need in order to provide long-term warnings towards people. Within the meteorological community, there's a, a real aim that everybody in the world has a weather warning for a weather event that's going to hit them. There's a large UN program called Warnings for All, which is trying to make sure that everyone in the world has the information they need to keep themselves safe from weather events. And our contribution to it is to provide the observational background that goes into it all. So here in mid-June, I'd like you to just focus in on the western part of Africa and you'll see those tropical storms flowing in over the western countries. So that daily cycle of storms. Now these particular storms, they were the same pattern as usual, but much more intense. So somehow intensified by more energy in the atmosphere and more water in the atmosphere. And this led to some quite large scale floodings in Niger, Ghana and Nigeria at this time. If you just look off the west coast of West Africa now, you'll start to see those waves as they travel off the coast of West Africa and into the Atlantic start to form the cyclones. 
So here we have Hurricane Beryl, which starts off as a wave off West Africa, travels across the Atlantic, over the Caribbean, towards the US, and then curves back round. It does what we call extratropical transition, and then travels round back over towards Europe. Now this storm was a category five storm. The peak winds were 270 kilometers an hour. It was an incredibly strong and devastating storm. And we saw that throughout this year, there were much stronger storms than usual, but the same number of storms. So what's happening with climate change is we're seeing warmer oceans, which is giving more energy to these tropical storms and making them much more destructive, even though we're seeing roughly the same numbers that we've seen in the 2024 season. The images we're showing you are tuned to pick up the large scale cloud structures. From the data we have, we also get a lot of information about fires, about smoke, about the composition of the atmosphere and water vapor. And particularly with, with fires, what we saw during this season was some devastating fire events around the world. At this particular point in time, so this is mid-August, we're seeing the large-scale fires in Canada that led to significant fires in the Jasper National Park. But there were also fires in the US, in Europe, in Southern Europe, in Greece and Croatia at this time as well. And we're seeing that with the stronger drought seasons, the fuel, so the wood, is much more available for fire when those fires happen. It was a, a warm summer and actually a quite an extended summer in Europe. So we saw quite a few summer type days as we moved into autumn in Europe. And that was something that was noticed in the meteorological record during 2024. So September, we're moving into the end of summer and the beginning of autumn in Europe and the beginning of spring in the Southern Hemisphere. You'll still see the tropical region very active. So the typhoons in the Japan basin and the hurricanes in the Atlantic and Pacific basins are still forming. We're getting to the end of that season, but you'll see those named storms as they travel. At this point in Europe, we saw some quite extended rainfall events in the central part of Europe, which led to some very significant flooding in Central Europe, with quite a few countries affected. If you look at the global patterns, you'll see that flow now of the, the tropical belt now starting to move slightly further south. The southern storms are moving further south and we're starting to see the northern Atlantic and the northern continental areas with those weather patterns now moving slightly further south again as we move closer to the winter period. At the end of October, we saw some quite devastating flooding in Spain, in Europe. This was fueled by the enhanced Mediterranean temperature. So that increase in temperature in the Mediterranean enables more evaporation and more water to be available to that storm system. And the mountain system in Spain actually prevented the storm from moving on. So you ended up with quite a persistent amount of rainfall falling over the one area for an extended period of time, leading to that devastating flooding. So even at the beginning of November, we still have warm waters enough to sustain these tropical cyclones and the storm systems. You'll see those named storms still being fueled by the warm oceans. So here we are heading in November towards December. We're back to the pattern that we saw at the beginning of the year with those large scale weather patterns moving across the northern continents, across the northern oceans. You'll still see that same flow across the southern oceans of those storms. And you really get a sense of the atmosphere as a, as a fluid. So the water vapor and the gases flowing around and the cloud systems being caught up in there as they flow round. So towards the east in the north and the south and then from the east towards the west in the middle. If we've piqued your interest, you can come to the UMETSAT website, umetsat.int. Every week, we take something from the space observing system that we've found interesting. Could be on land, could be over the oceans, could be something to do with clouds, could be a dust event, could be a volcano. We also have a live view. So if you want to have a look at what the atmosphere is doing right now, come to the website and you can have a look at that live streamed data. And if you want to know more about the UMETSAT data and products and what we provide to science users and service users around the world, you can come to the user portal, user.umetsat.int, and there you can find all the technical information.
These data are made available to service providers around the world so that we can understand the Earth's environment better. I really hope you've enjoyed this year's look at the year of weather for 2024.